first of all thanks for being here in my youtube channel so in this lesson number one on the topic ratio and proportion so now we are going to learn introduction about this topic right so before entering into this topic first you guys need to know one thing if you are a regular follower of feel free to learn youtube channel so you guys know that many times i have told you this if you need to be strong in quantitative aptitude so first you guys need to be strong on four important topics so only if you know these four important topic basic concepts you can able to crack the questions in quantitative aptitude so first topic will be percentage second topic will be average third topic will be number system and the fourth topic will be ratio proportion so you guys know that percentage we have posted a 5 to 7 lesson on our youtube channel and then average uh, 7 to 8 lesson number system most important topic i have posted 11 videos that is 11 lesson on the topic number system so now we are going to learn ratio proportion lesson number one introduction so actually we have planned to post 10 lesson on the topic number system so after watching this lesson number in one introduction so don't forget to watch the remaining videos that i am going to post in this month got it so totally i plan to post 10 videos on the topic ratio and proportion got it or not so these four topics are more important so friends never forget this only if you are strong in all these four topics you can be strong on quantitative aptitude session got it so all the remaining lessons are available on free that is all the videos are free on my youtube channel so don't forget to watch all these remaining three lessons got it so be strong on the basics understand all the import try to understand all the important concepts so and if you take if you are like strong in concepts basic concepts then solving any question in quantitative aptitude will be easy got it so now let me talk about a ratio and a proportion introduction so first what is called as a ratio and what is called as proportion two different words most of the students will know what is called as ratio but most of the students will not know what is called as proportion so here when you take quantitative aptitude question so the question that is based on ratio will be 98 percentage most of the question will be only on the concept ratio but when we take proportion only two percentage only two percentage of the question you can able to see in the concept of proportion but you guys need to learn both the concepts right so give importance to ratio but you need to know what is called as proportion also that is important when we move on to some difficult level question like cat exams gate exam question where you can able to see small concept will be on the uh, area that is proportion so that's what i am saying try to learn what is called a ratio as well as proportion so first let me see what is called as a ratio a definition of ratio so a ratio as we can say this def uh, ratio definition in many different terms but understand one thing comparison of two or more items right so comparing two item or comparing two or more items so after comparison that comparison value will be represent in sort of a numbers this is called as a ratio understood or not so this two is two one so this two dots represents the ratio understood so the definition of ratio is comparing two items or two or more items so after comparison we will cancel some sort of numbers and finally the final number will be represent in sort of a numbers it is called as a ratio so that's what i have given example here two is to one so after comparison the ratio is in the part of two is to one or else if you want any example i can say any example here so let me take my salary will be ten thousand so salary for monthly salary of mine will be ten thousand and your monthly salary is 20,000, right? If we need to say the salary in terms of a ratio, understand what I'm saying? My salary is how much? 10,000, right? Your salary is how much? 20,000. If, if we need to say the monthly salary in terms of a ratio, so what you guys have to do is, so first cancel the value 0, 0, 4, 0 here. So 4, 0 here. So finally, we can say that the ratio of monthly salary of both the person is in the ratio 1 is to 2. So the meaning here is I am getting one part of salary and you guys are getting double the part of salary. Yes or no? If my salary is 10,000 and your salary is 20,000, double the amount. So we can say that the ratio will be 1 is to 2. 
So this is the way we will represent the value. Not only two products or not only two items. It can be anything. It can be two or it can be three. So we can say it is a, if it is a two value. So two is two, three is two, four. If it is a four items has been compared. So two is two, three is two, four is two, five. Understood or not? Right? So the ratio will be represented by two dots. And comparing a value is called as comparing two or more products is called as a ratio. Understood? This is enough, right? So this 1 is to 2 can also be written as 1 by 2. Both are same, right? The meaning of ratio is A is to B. So this A is to B are also written as A by B. So A by B, A is to B, both are same. Understood or not? So now entering into the concept called proportion. So the definition of proportion here is uh, equality of two ratios. Understand like this, equality of two ratio is called as proportion. For example, uh, now initially what we did here is we have compared two person salary. Yes, my salary and your salary has been compared. But the proportion meaning here is four person salary will be compared and it will be equated. For example, A is to B, right? Is two, right? This is called as proportion. I'm keeping four dots here. So this four dot means equal to, understood or not, which is called as proportion. So ratio has been represented by two dots, right? If they represent by four dot, it is called as a proportion. So four dot meaning here is equal to, understood or not? So A is to B, C is to D, understood? This is called as a proportion. So the equality of two ratio. So this can also be written as A is to B equal to C is to D, understood or not? Two values here. A is to B and C is to T. So two ratio values, so two ratio values equating. It is called as a, the equality of two ratio values is called as a proportion. So proportion will be represented by four dots. Ratio will be represented by one, that is two dots. Understood? And second importantly, if you need to calculate one of the values, it is easy. For example, let me take A is to B will be two is to three. And uh, C is 2D. So C is 2D will be a 4. Let me keep like this. So 4 is 2D. So in case if we need to find what is the value of D. So this can be written as 2 by 3 is equal to 4 by D. Understood or not? We know that A is to B can be written as A by B. So A is to B can be written as A by B. So 2 is to 3 can be written as 2 by 3. So 4 is 2D can be written as 4 by D. So now cross multiply it. So D is equal to. So 4 into 3 divided by 2. So cancel it to. So D will be 6. So finally, in case if we don't know any one of these values, so we can easily find like this. Understood or not? So if you substitute D equal to 6 here, you will get left hand side 2 is to 3, right hand side 2 is to 3. So this is called as proportions. So got it friends. So that's it about a ratio that is uh, the definition, right? We have seen only the definition. We can now we can see some of the examples. As well as we can see one important note that you guys need to remember before solving every question on the topic ratio. So now let me move on to the types of ratios. So totally there are five types of ratios and the last one is it's not a type. So we need to find out to find this compound ratio, right? So types is called duplicate ratio, triplicate ratio, and sub duplicate and sub triplicate and inverse ratio and the compound ratio. So if you are like a college student preparing for campus interview, so you can able to see one question from this area and most of the campus questions we can able to see it. They usually give some numbers, three is to seven. And they will ask us to find what is called as a duplicate ratio of three is to seven. Or giving some numbers, they will ask you what is called sub triplicate ratio of the given number. So that's the thing we are going to learn now. So just see here, what is called as a duplicate ratio? If, if they ask what is called a duplicate ratio of the given number, just square the term. So what is the ratio they have given? 3 is to 7. This is the question, right? So question they have given 3 is to 7. And our target is to find what is duplicate ratio of the given number. So what you need to do? You need to square the number. So 3 square will be 9. 7 square will be 49. So this will be the answer for the first question. Understood or not, right? So duplicate ratio is nothing but squaring the number. So triplicate ratio is just cube the given number, right? So 3 is to 7. So cube it, 3 3s are 9, 9 3s are 27. So 27 is to 343 will be the triplicate ratio. Friends, understood. So what is called a duplicate? You need to square the given value. So what is called as triplicate? Cube the given value. Now, 
subduplicate and subtriplicate. Just listen here. Subduplicate is nothing but you need to take the square root for the given number. What is the given number here? 9. So take square root of 9 and the second number is 25. Take square root of 25. So square root of 9 will be 3. Square root of 25 will be 5. So finally we can say that subduplicate ratio will be 3 is to 5. So subtriplicate ratio, you have to find cube root of the given number. Got it? So cube root of 25 and the cube root of 343. So if you find what is cube root of 25, which is I think cube root of 125, right? We take 125. So cube root of 125 will be 5. Got it? So cube root of 343 will be 7. So 5 is to 7 will be the subtriplicate ratio. So friends understood. So these are the four important types. Always remember these four important types. Inverse ratio is very simple. So they have given a ratio 5 is to 7. If they ask to find the inverse ratio, thus inverse the value, right? So 5 is to 7, write as 7 is to 5. This is called as inverse ratio. Understood? So these are the five important types of ratio. So first will be duplicate ratio and triplicate ratio. So duplicate ratio is nothing but squaring the given numbers. So triplicate ratio is nothing but uh, you need to cube the given numbers. Got it? Subduplicate. Subduplicate is you need to find the square root of the given number. Subtriplicate you need to find the cube root of the given number. And inverse ratio just inverse the value. Got it? So last will be compound ratio. So A is to B is 1 is to 3, C is to D is 2 is to 9, E is to F will be 4 is to 7. If they are asking like find the compound ratio of the given values, the meaning here is you need to first multiply only the first number of the given values. So 1 is to 3, so 1, 2 is to 9, 2, 4 is to 7, sub 4, got it? So multiply all the first numbers. So 1 into 2 into 4 divided by the second number 3, 9, 7. So 3, 9 and 7. So if you find the answer for it, this is called as compound ratio. So compound ratio is nothing but the numerator value will be you need to multiply all the first number given ratio values. So divided by the second number given values. Got it? It's called as a compound ratio. That's it. So these are called as a types of ratios. So initially in this introduction lesson, what we initially learned is introduction about ratio and proportion. So now we have learned what are all the different types of ratios are there. And third, now we are going to see some important concepts of the ratio. And then finally, we are going to see what are all the lessons that we are going to post on the topic ratios and proportions. So now let me move on to some of the important concept of ratios. So now let me move on to one of the important concept that is important note you need to remember before solving every question on the topic ratio and proportion. So the first year is a ratio should not be in a fraction. So most most important point sometimes in the question itself they will give you the ratio in terms of fraction. So what you guys have to do is in case if they have given a question in terms of fraction you first need to take the LCM of the numbers and convert the given value in terms of integer and then start solving the question. So friends understood, ratio should not be in fraction at any point. Got it? So for example, if they have given a ratio like this, A is to B is equal to 2 is to 3. You can take the value as it is because the given ratio is not in terms of fraction. In case, if the given question, the ratio value is in fraction. So let me keep like this, 2 by 9 is to 1 by 3. Got it? So A is to B value is 2 by 9 and 1 by 3. So here in case if they have given a value like this, it's called as a fraction, right? 2 by 9, 1 by 3. It's not an integer, it's a fraction. So if they have given a values in terms of fraction, so first take LCM, 9 and 3. So LCM will be 9, got it? So here also 9, keep number 2 as it is. So 3 into 3 will be 9, so 1 into 3 will be 3. So finally, A is to B is equal to 2 is to 3, understood or not? And then start solving the questions. Got it? Similarly, you can take any values. For example, A is to B will be 2 by 7 is to 5 by 14. In case, they have given a value like this. Right? So, A is to B is equal to 2 by 7, 5 by 14. So, first what you need to remember is ratio should not be in fraction. So, you need to take an LCM of 7 and 14, cancel it and then find what is the integer that is a ratio value. Got it? 7 and 14. So, the LCM will be 14 here. 7 into 2 will be 14, so 2 into 2 will be 14. 
so here sorry 2 into 2 will be 4 so here also 14 so keep 5 as it is so finally we can say that a is to b will be 4 is to 5 understood or not so this will be the value of a and b so most important point here you need to remember here is ratio should not be in a fraction at any point even while you are saying the final answer it should be in the term of integer it should not be in a fraction in case if you are getting the final answer in terms of fraction take the lcm cancel it and then say the answer in an integer in case if the given question itself you can able to see the values what they have given is in the fraction first convert the fraction value into an integer by taking an lcm and then after finding the integer value start solving the question understood most important point in the topic ratio always keep that in mind the value of ratio should not be in the term of fraction understood so friends, that's it about this lesson number one introduction we have learned three important things one is first we have learned what is called as ratio and proportion and we have solved some examples on ratio as well as in proportions right and we have learned the definitions also so second importantly we have learned what all the different types of ratios are there duplicate ratio sub duplicate and similarly five types of ratio and finally we have learned what is called as compound ratio with an example question and the third importantly we have to keep this note in mind every time while solving a question that is based on ratio and proportion where the ratio value should not be in terms of fraction always it should be in the term of integer got it and finally uh, here i have listed the 10 lessons what i am going to post uh, videos on ratios and proportion so surely i will post all the 10 lesson on this topic don't forget to watch all these 10 lessons so once you strong on these four quantitative aptitude session topic that is percentage average number system and ratio proportion it's it's 100 percent guarantee that you can able to crack most of the question in quantitative aptitude because these are the topics are basics so friends, that's it about this video so thank you so much for watching this video so if you really like it share this video to your friends those who are preparing for competitive exams or else your brothers and sisters who are studying our final year college final year studying for a campus interview so definitely all these areas will be helpful for the quantitative aptitude session for their campus interviews so thank you so much for watching it bye